From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. If it feels like the city of Warwick has been in the headlines a lot lately, you're not wrong. First, Mayor Joseph Solomon sent up a red flare in his February State of the City address warning his city faced a $19 million budget deficit. Then a threat to close the gap by eliminating school sports triggered intense public pushback. But is the financial health of Rhode Island's third largest city as precarious as the headlines suggest? And if not, why so much alarm? Our guest this week on Newsmakers, Warwick Mayor Joseph Solomon. Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. Joining me on the program, Eyewitness News reporter Ted Nisi. Mayor Solomon, welcome to the program. It's good to see you. Good to see you, gentlemen. Pleasure to be here. So I want to start with the question I raised at the top of the show here. There is a lot of confusion about the state of finances in your city right now. So let's just cut to it. Is, is there a current budget deficit? And if so, how much? Uh, there is not a current budget deficit deficit at this point as uh, well there is when you talk about the last uh, budget adoption because we did go into our rainy day fund by 2.4 million in prior years that that fund has been tapped in excess of four million dollars in one year and 3.8 I think in the last year so we're heading in a positive direction but uh, uh, the uh, the 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 amount of decline in that deficit is decreased significantly. So there was a, uh, continuing along the confusion line, there seemed to be a lot of confusion about the rainy day fund as well. In your February State of the City address, you were very much doom and gloom, and you said there uh, the rainy day fund had shrunk down to between 13 and 14 million dollars, yet an audit that your city just handed in to the state said that rainy day fund as of the end of fiscal 18 was 23 million dollars was your calculator out of batteries at that point <laughs> no it wasn't no it wasn't as a matter of fact uh, all figures and indicators indicated that it, uh, i think it was between the figures of 13 and 15 million dollars that we had anticipated our rainy day fund to decline to uh, fortunately Fortunately, uh, we ended the year with revenues. We did not exp increase the revenues, which were not accounted for, nor could they be predicted at that particular time, and uh, decreased expenditures. Between those two factors alone, that mitigated the decline in our rainy day fund. In addition, when I first took office, there were 88 jobs that people left for retirement or various other reasons, and uh, uh, those 88 jobs were not filled. Hence, there was a lot of cost savings associated by not filling those jobs. Uh, you know, had they been filled, that would have carried on the expense that's been carried on in many years prior there too. So when you spoke in February, did you were you saying you thought the rainy day fund was going to finish? the budget year of 2019 that ended June 30th, 2019, down 13 to 14? Or were you saying you thought it, you'd already used it up at the end of the 2018 budget, which had ended eight months before? Yeah. Well, what, what had happened, Ted, was when I assumed office, when the interim mayor left, there was no one in the finance department. We revamped the finance department. And what we were faced with were the figures utilized in the fiscal year 18 budget, which is a 4.3 decline of that rainy day fund. The figures of the fiscal year 19 budget, which was a, an additional 3.8 million decline. That was the budget that the prior administration had handed to us um, on their way out. And uh, the finance director, as you know, resigned two days after that budget was submitted. So we had those two factors, um, which came to $13.4 million decline. You're starting off with 21.5. You do the arithmetic, that's a scary thought. You've already, already established you've got a $13.4 million. But you're decline. saying you didn't know in February, because they didn't end up, you didn't end up having to use the fiscal 18 rainy day fund allocation that had been on paper. You're saying as late as February, you didn't know you hadn't used it for the year ended eight months before? As, as late as February, when I was 
two months into office, sworn into office as in my term. My term began January. Yeah, I, yeah I, but you were in a special election before. You're not in a special election. No, no, no. You no, no, inherited, no, 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 inherited no, no, it. I, excuse I, me. I was not in a special election. A phone call was made. I was mayor one day. I was mayor of a city, the second largest city in the city of Warwick, uh, in the state of Rhode Island. And Alan and I have this argument all along. I know, but stay on track here. <laughs> you, you, you didn't take office, to Ted's point, you didn't take office in January 1. I mean, that was when no, you no, officially I, were elected. Like, when, when I became the interim mayor, there was no finance department in place. I called in uh, RIPAC to assist us in establishing how we could fill this gap. They performed an analysis. They was tremendous assistance. We've got that department up and running now where there's cross-training, where there are people, there are bodies there. there. None of this took place before. There was no cross-training. So when someone left, hypothetically, that transactions that that person used to post weren't getting posted. But what they, about your role as city council president? I mean, you, and on that body, and you were there for a very, very long time, mm -hmm. you also are are or should be keeping an eye on the finances, right? Well, the subject of the legislative branch versus the executive branch, uh, the duties differ significantly. On the legislative side, we deal with the budget adoptions, the figures that are presented, and the basis of those figures from the executive branch. We do not get involved in the day-to-day -day operation on the legislative side of the executive's duties. That's the way our chart is set up. We rely on the information that's presented to us and we act on that information. If that information is not accurate, uh, I can only rely on that information that's given to me. So are you saying the information provided by Mayor Scott Avedesian to the City Council was not accurate? Well, I can tell you that uh, in his last budget before he left, there was a predicted $500,000 savings in LED uh, uh, because of implementation of LED lights, which we didn't have any LED lights. So that's a $500,000 gap. I can tell you that the $4 million uh, school contract uh, was going to need more funds to address with the teacher's contract that was part of the negotiations. When he presented his budget, that $4 million was not funded in that budget. Um, there are a number of different things that there were predictions of savings, there were predictions of expenditures that didn't have the necessary funds to make, and that was a very, very, very uh, scary scenario at that time. Fortunately, due to the austerity posture and the measures that we took when we took over, we froze all spending. We froze all unnecessary spending, emergency spending only. We rolled back 5%, all budget through each department, all budget line items. We, it was red alert. It was red alert and the, the result of that red alert was a significant savings with the audit, which the current audit shows, and uh, increased revenue, reduced expenses. So I'm happy with the results of the current audit, and, but it didn't come accidentally. It came with hard work and a tremendous staff to assist me in that. One of the reasons for the confusion, I think, is because the audit took so long to come out. We didn't get the 2018 budget audit until the 2019 budget year was already over. It was more than a year late. I know that you, you're not, that was a previous problem as well in Warwick, so it's continued. Well, but can you promise Warwick taxpayers this year's audit will be in by its due date on December 31st? I can tell you that. The, the, the mechanics of this year's audit began before the final certification of the auditing firm of uh, this past year's audit. And I can tell you the delay of that audit was, again, due to the fact that the information necessary for the auditing firms to certify and approve of the numbers and facts and figures, a lot of those numbers weren't posted because there was no personnel in the finance department to post that information for the auditors to analyze. So will this year's audit be done by that December is my 31st? Goal. That is my goal. My goal is, and, and my finance director's goal in that entire department. I think that uh, we've got staffing levels up to a point where we can do a lot more now than what was done in the past. Again, you can't run a finance department on a city the size of Warwick on two individuals. And it just doesn't happen. When you have 88 retirements, when you have the finance director retire two days after you take office on your interim term, 
It's a scary thought. That's the person that wrote or helped produce that budget. All right, let's move on to schools. Uh, since you had brought it up, the, the, there was a lot of outrage when the Warwick schools uh, threatened to cancel sports because the finances were so bad. The city has agreed to cough up $4 million um, to restore sports and other mm -hmm. programs. You took more than $1 million from the road paving budget to pay for that. How much is left in the road paving budget now? How much of a hit is that to the road paving budget? Well, it's not going to be much of a hit because I have a successor plan relative to fulfilling what was taken from the road budget. And that is asking the schools to repay $1 million? No, no. It's got nothing to do with the school's repayment. That's something that's probably going to have to be approved and over overseen by the uh, Auditor General, any plan that they or methodology that they wish to use to reimburse the city. Um, no, no. When it comes to the, uh, the funding, I made a promise to the students of the city of Warwick that very early on that they will have sports in September. I kept that promise. And the way we were able to keep that promise is communication, compromise, and speaking with the legislative branch of government, the school committee, the school department, and myself. We've been constantly talking. We were able to come to an agreement of a figure that works for everybody. When we first started off on mediation, it was all about uh, performing our due diligence, seeing what resources we have available to meet the needs of our, our, our school department and our community uh, without taking or detracting from the needs required in our city. Uh, so the money just magically appeared. I mean, no, no, we've, heard, we've, been, we've been hearing these no, answers no, no, for a no. while. So and, I'm trying to, I'm trying to drill appear. down on where this and, money is coming fact, from. As a matter of fact, and I will give you specifically the accounts. We drew this down, $350,000 from professional services, A. That was because without going into litigation, the cost of uh, experts and attorneys, that was going to be a significant savings. So we took it partially out of professional services. $40,000 we reduced. Give me the biggest chunk, man. I can, we the can't biggest go. chunk is $3 million from paving, which... There we go. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, so there, is, there is $1 million remaining in paving, A, and the $3 million we are looking to restore through long-term bonding commitment at 1% or less... Long-term bonding commitment. You're going to borrow money at less than or uh, close to 1% over and extend the project where it's a more aggressive paving program throughout the city where it, the cost of this program will probably be spread over 10 years at almost a little above 0% interest. So it's either the best analogy I can give you is pay all at once or, or no interest over 10 years. And I think that setting that plan in motion is the most feasible and cost-effective way of addressing roads that haven't been addressed for 20 years. We've been uh, in the weeds a bit, but it's important stuff about the city's finances. Uh, one more on the schools that you mentioned, Mayor. The, as I understood it reading the resolution, the, the schools got $4 million to, to make them whole for last fiscal year and figure out the deficit situation, but they're going to pay the city side back a million dollars a year was the request. Um, where are the schools going to find an extra million dollars a year to pay back the city side if they already have been in the red, which is how they got into the problem in the first place? Well, I, I think that question would be best addressed to the school and their finances. However, the final uh, approval of any such plan, which I haven't discussed in particular with the schools at this point, will be that of Dennis Hoyle and the Auditor General's office because they oversee this. They oversee the feasibility. Ultimately, the city has always been on the hook for all expenditures. Um, if the school goes forward with the plan to repay the city, they may be repaying the city with future funds that they received from the city. So it's just you're just moving the money around at that well, point. Well, no, I'm not moving anything around. I'm just telling you the facts of life. <laughs> um, and the, 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 these are the facts of life. And, uh, 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 and again, it has to be done where, in a way where it's not going to affect the city's financial posture or uh, strength, and it has to be feasible from the school department. And I think some of Rhode Island laws indicate that the only, you know, things like that can only happen when the school has a positive cash flow or, or has a, they're in the black at the end of the year. And uh, 
you know, I, I, I'd like to be optimistic that they will be in the black at the end of the year, but if they're not, um, it's a point that, uh, you know, will just go on until they are. All right, we've got to take a break on the program. We have uh, thrown around a lot of numbers <laughs> on Newsmakers, which is saying something for the show. When we come back, headlines of an FBI investigation in Warwick, where does that stand? Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. To my left, Eyewitness News reporter Ted Nisi. Our guest this week is Warwick Mayor Joseph Solomon. Mayor, in February, uh, you confirmed for Channel 12 there was a federal investigation at Warwick City Hall. And in May, my colleague Walt Buteau reported three people at City Hall were interviewed by the FBI. It's August. What do you know of the investigation right now? Uh, I know the same of the investigation right now that I knew back then. Uh, People were interviewed. Some elected officials have gone on the record indicating they were interviewed. I'm not privy to what they were interviewed about or the subject matter or where that, inter where that investigation is led or where it's leading or if it's terminated. I'm not privy to that Have you been interviewed by a federal investigator or the grand jury? Absolutely or not. Or a grand jury, I should no, say. No, has, I have not. Has the city been subpoenaed by investigators for records? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I, I haven't been notified of it, anything. Do you know if the city has voluntarily provided records without a subpoena? Well, elected officials are able to get records. Uh, there's APRA requests that have made. So, uh, are you aware are of any APRA requests that have been made? Mm, not particularly. I don't keep tabs on all APRA requests, but I mean, there's a process. So when you ask a question if officials have, or if records have been conveyed, I can't answer that with certainty either way. There was a burst of chatter about the FBI investigation at the time Tim talked about, and you know it was clearly getting talking being discussed in the city. That's when reporters talked to you. Uh, has that continued or has it died down based on sort of just what you hear from City Hall and the people you talk to? You know, Ted, I've been so focused on the ball of getting the job done. Um, I don't listen to chatter or innuendos or things of that nature. When people ask me a question, I tell them all that I know about that subject matter. I know that an elected official, as he indicated, was uh, contacted, maybe more than one elected official. Um, however, I don't know the contents of their investigation. I know that I was not contacted, and if I had been contacted, I would tell you I was contacted. I may not tell you what they asked me because, again, if it's, a, if it's an investigation, uh, you, you let the investigation take its course. But I can, without any doubt, represent to you today that I have never been questioned by any authority as to any ongoing investigation in the city of Warwick. Well, what can you tell your constituents, and we don't have to belabor this uh, subject, so we can end it here, but you know, your constituents might be worried about this. I have to believe you know something about what is being looked at. You've been on the city council for a long time. As Ted says, there has been a lot of chatter. Sure, maybe you don't listen, <clears throat> but I'm sure you hear it. Uh, and now you're the mayor. You have to know something about what they're looking at. What can you tell your constituents? Well, what I can tell my constituents is I've been elected to the position of mayor. I'm focused on the ball. I'm continuing to make Warwick a better place. Uh, as councilman, uh, I'm proud of a lot of things I did on the council, whether, whether it be forcing bids for health care to get the best values for, for, for the taxpayers and the people. Uh, also ratification of employment contracts that was never on the books before the mayor was able to unilaterally enter contracts. Uh, I know there was chatter in the news, I don't know if it's part of an investigation, about uh, non-ratified contracts. When it was brought to my attention, I with stopped the, it. With firefighters? I stopped it immediately, yes. With, I stopped it immediately because it was counter to the legislation that I sponsored years ago that was vetoed by the prior administration. Is that your understanding of what this investigation may be about? No, I don't know what the investigation. But I'm telling you of things that are in the news when you say, mm -hmm. you know, things that have come to light. I, I, these are things that I sponsored so that what well, would be a better place. Ratifications of contracts. We expect contracts to be ratified. Um, you know, it's a check and balance system. Uh, we don't expect contracts to be done in a unilateral matter by any administration. 
whether it be past administrations, future administrations, or current administrations. You, That's not the purpose of that law that I sponsored. You've been involved in city politics almost 20 years by the time you, you went into the mayor's office, so it's not like City Hall was a mystery to you. But I'm still curious, what was the biggest surprise about mm -hmm. becoming the mayor? What did you not expect, or what was, uh, yeah, what took you by surprise uh, taking this job? Okay, the biggest surprise that I did not expect was working 24-7, <laughs> okay? Uh, as, as council president, as a councilman, you answer your constituents' concern in your local districts. As mayor, I receive calls all hours and night, of the day and night, whether it be a catastrophe, whether it be a, a personnel matter uh, involving an employee's family, something like that. They're not all good calls, believe me. And depending on the day, uh, I kind of quiver when that phone rings. Um, so it's a 24-7 job. In the year, and I t say year because I did six months of the interim mayor's term and six months now, I have not taken a vacation day. I work 24-7. My wife, God bless her, she's patient. She understands my passion for this job, my love for the city, her love for the city. So that's what makes it work. So are you going to run again? Absolutely. I love this job. <laughs> After all that, absolutely, <laughs> I'm going to run again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, because... I love Warwick, and I want to make Warwick a better place. I want to ask you about the DMV. You were issued a warning by the very board you chair, the Motor Vehicle Dealers License and Hearing Board. Um, it was just a warning on this one, but you own, a lot of people might not know this, you own a, a, a car dealership and have several uh, dealer plates. A complaint suggested the dealership wasn't really in operation. You shouldn't have those plates. You said the sign on the dealership blew off in a storm, and there were lack of hours because you're a mayor now. All that aside. The Raimondo administration asked for you to step down from the board, which you refused to do. Whatever your situation is with the dealership, you're the mayor of, you like to say, the second largest city, others say the third largest city. Mm -hmm. It's a big, it's an important job. Mm -hmm. Why not leave the board and focus on the city? Because I enjoy my work on the board. The prior administration, they served on the Solid Waste Management Board. They served on the RIPTA Board. You can still do public service and serve on a board and complete your duties. The Avedesian administration has done it for years, and the Solomon administration will continue to do that. Uh, relative to my personal business, I don't plan on being a career politician all my life, or I'm not looking for a job in government after I leave government. I have businesses that I've established. They're licensed. They're legal. Are you actively selling cars right now? Am I actively? If I choose to be tomorrow, yes. Well, you have to sell a certain number of no, cars. No, that's false. And I'm not chairman of the Board of Licensing. So that's misinformation. So again, what happens is things get convoluted, convoluted to a way, to an extent where um, they're nonsense. There was no finding. I do nothing different than any other dealer does. The, the, the sign that, there was a sign on the building, a smaller sign. They wanted the 24 square foot sign that was blown down. It's back up. There's many dealerships that don't have 24 square foot signs. So I think there should be equal enforcement, not just because you shouldn't enforce against a person because they hold a public office. What? And I'm not alleging anything from the governor's office. The governor and myself never spoke about me, myself, resigning from the board. Okay, I so respect the governor, if, and if I'm the sure governor, she If the governor called you directly and asked you to, to step down, would you step down? I don't think there's a reason for me to step down. I think I can completely fulfill the duties of that board in my term. And I'm proud of what I've done in the past, and I'm, and I'm proud of what the future holds for both the city of Warwick and the board of licensing. And I will make sure that there is equal enforcement on that board, because not only... It sounds As like a, you feel like you were treated unfairly then. No, no, but when you have uh, um, priorities or, you know, selective enforcement of certain things, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to the, the business person the, that's out there in the automotive industry to be pointed out or, 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 or focused upon when they're trying to earn a living and uh, they've... Uh, they work we have very hard to half, establish half their so business. Ahead, I have to ask, Mayor, because we're running low on time. TF Green, vitally right. important to Warwick, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. Uh, it's got some not great news this week about Norwegian Airlines reducing flights. I looked at the latest traffic numbers. Passenger traffic was down 9% through May mm -hmm. at TF Green. Are you worried about the health of the airport? Uh, the, the health of the airport, the airport's a, a great partner with the city of Warwick, and it's an economic locomotive for the city of Warwick. 
Uh, I am concerned about it. However, it's been a roller coaster ride since day one. Did anyone predict a couple of days ago that the stock market was going to drop 800 points? It's a, the national economy, the world all over. It's a roller coaster ride right now. We're in a zone where uh, some days we're up, and I think the stock market's up today. <laughs> and some days we're down. Um, but I have all the confidence in the administration at RIAC that they will do the right things. Iftikhar is a gentleman, he's a great businessman, and he's proved to me that uh, he, you know, he, he puts the airport first and foremost, and he's a man of his word, and I look forward to working with him in the future. 30 seconds left, you're a Democrat, anyone you like for president? Uh, too early to say. <laughs> no one you're watching or with interest right I'm now? I'm watching everyone. <laughs> <laughs> not even the other mayor that is running for president right now? <laughs> no, no okay. I'm watching everyone right now. <laughs> All right, Warwick Mayor Joseph Solomon, thanks so much for joining us on the program. We talked Thank a you. lot about finances on the first half. If you missed any of it, it's on WPRI.com. And don't forget to sign up for our podcast through iTunes. For Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. We will see you next week on Newsmakers.